stories don't define you. How you tell them will. Hi, I'm Sarah Elkins, your host and chief story maker of Elkins Consulting. We share stories for many reasons, to persuade, to entertain, to connect. What we sometimes forget is the impact of the stories we tell ourselves. Whether you're sharing personal stories or business stories, how you share them makes a difference in how you remember them and in how you're perceived by the people you're interacting with. When you figure out which stories to share, difficult bosses and coworkers, successes, failures, the next step is to develop how you share them. Have you figured out your patterns, your roles in those successes, the discomfort and your challenges? In this series, you'll hear stories that will resonate with you. You'll nod your head in understanding, and then we'll dig into the lessons from each of those. How many times have you been sharing a story only to be interrupted by a person eager to share his own? When I'm working with clients on communication skills, I remind them to listen for understanding, not to respond. But during this podcast, I'm asking you to listen and consider your own related stories, to listen and consider which stories in your life might have impacted you in a similar way. Active listening, the power of unlocking stories in others. I love my work. Every client, every group brings new challenges and learning for me. I had an opportunity recently to work with dependents of National Guardsmen and women who had been or were currently deployed. The woman who hired me described the students as resilient, curious, and full of compassion. And when I met them that day, I completely agreed with her assessment. I've never worked with a group quite like these teenagers. They were welcoming, warm, and very bright. Every one of them had something valuable to contribute to each conversation I facilitated. And when I left, I had more hope than ever for the future of our communities. When we started the workshop, I talked about personal brand, about being an ambassador for your people, no matter who you represent at any given time or for any audience. We discussed how we can share specific stories about our past experiences in order to demonstrate the qualities we want to demonstrate to any audience, whether that's a friend, a family member, in an interview, or at school. It was the last hour of our time together after a full day of workshops, and I needed to focus on active listening rather than just sharing stories. We started with an exercise where we broke into small groups and each of them needed to share a story with their small group about a moment that they found great satisfaction in, a story of something that happened to them that was interesting. And when we came back together as a group, I had the people who listened to those stories tell the group more about what they had learned about the person through the story they had shared. I had described some of the techniques that I use for active listening before we did the exercise, like repeating words back to people to make sure we understand them, leaning forward, making sure your body language is open and approachable. But I knew a demonstration would be a much more effective way for this group to understand active listening. The students were in a big circle, very quiet, when I turned my chair to face the boy sitting to my right, a shy athlete with his arms crossed over his chest. I started to ask him questions. I leaned forward just slightly, my hands relaxed on my lap. I was fully present. And as I started the conversation, my attention was only on him and the others just faded away for a little while. I know you love sports and that you've had some great moments playing baseball and football, but what else do you do? Not much. Hang out with friends, I guess. Hmm. Do you have a dog? Yes. What's your dog's name? Henry. Henry? What a great name for a dog. What's his breed? He's an Australian Shepherd and Lab Mix. Oh, I bet he's really sweet. How do you spend time with him? Do you take him for walks? Does he hunt? 
Does he love to play fetch with a ball? We walk together almost every day. He smiled subtly, just the edges of his lips turning upward. I'll bet you really love Henry and he loves you. Did you get him as a puppy or did you adopt him when he was a little older? He proudly smiled and said, we got him when he was only eight weeks old. Ah, oh, I love that. Just a little puppy. Was he super snuggly with you back then? Yes. Do you miss his snuggly puppy days? This time he smiled sweetly, an obvious grin at the memory of Henry as a puppy. And that's when his hands dropped into his lap, relaxed. I love puppies, even though they're a lot of work. Did you train Henry to do any tricks? Oh well, yeah, he's really smart. One time I taught him to, he went on, sharing a story of how he trained his dog to do a special trick. We wrapped up the conversation and I turned my chair to face the rest of the group. Anyone notice what happened there? Almost immediately and almost in unison, the teen said, yes, he put his hands down from crossing them across his chest. He dropped his hands into his lap. They were so excited at what they had just witnessed in their friend. I couldn't have planned a better demonstration of the power of active listening. And that audience immediately understood that power when they saw the shift in their friend's body language. It's not that he was feeling hostile toward me. His arms were crossed across his chest because he was feeling shy and uncomfortable. He just wasn't ready to share yet. The other students had spent a lot of time with him, but they had never heard the story of how he trained his dog to do that trick. They realized the value of asking those special questions to get somebody to open up and really share something important to them. If we want to truly connect with a person, we have to help them feel safe. One of the best ways to do that is to open our body language and ask questions to draw out their stories. Now it's your turn. In your next conversation with someone, try that active listening. Try leaning forward, making sure your body language is open and approachable. Ask questions and really listen to the answers. Dig a little bit deeper. The beauty of this is that while you're listening to their stories, if you're really paying attention, you're not thinking of your own stories and how you can contribute to the conversation. You are only fully present with the person in front of you. I promise you, if you continue to do this, work on that active listening and your body language and asking questions, your communication and your relationships will improve. I'd love to hear how this changes your next conversation. Please leave a comment at the end of this podcast. Thank you for listening to Your Stories Don't Define You, How You Share Them Will. Please visit my website for more podcast episodes, blog posts, and information about how I can help you develop and share your stories at elkinsconsulting.com. Could you tell me that you're going away? Don't say.